somebody like that. Thank 
mountain I will swallow up the covering which is over all people even the veil which is stretched over the nations he will swallow up death for all times and the Lord God will wipe the tears from the faces and from our eyes and he will remove the reproach at the people from all the people on the earth for the Lord my God has spoken may the readers and the hearers keep this in your memory for our New Testament scripture coming from 1st Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 18 but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will bring God, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Amen. Our reflections will be uh, shared with us by Reverend Jim Shelburne. And then the resolution will be done by Oshana Shepherd. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. 
I um, was asked to do uh, this and uh, for this great woman, Sister Bessie. I'm not. Um, I am not worthy to even do this for her. Lou, you may not know, Sister Bessie is my mother-in-law. But even more than that, she is my friend. But when I first met Sister Bessie years and years ago, I put out my hand to shake her hand, but she hugged me instead. And when she hugged me, I felt something that I had never felt before, but I didn't know what it was, and really it scared me more than anything. And about two hours later, she said, uh, I'm going to go see you at church on Sunday. I knew right then I was in trouble, because I said to myself, I had not planned on going to church. I had moved far away from the church, but when she asked me, what do you say? to her when a woman, a great woman of God asks you, are you going to be here on Sunday? You say, yes, ma'am, I am. And every Sunday for years, she would remind me when church was over, she'd say, see you next Sunday? And once again, I'd say, yes, ma'am, yes, ma I'll see you there. Sister Bessie is a great woman. She's a great recruiter for God. And I tell you this because you can start a conversation with her, but I guarantee you it's going to finish talking about the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's going to finish talking about her children. It's going to finish talking about her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, and her great-great-grandchildren, nieces and nephews. It's going to finish, though, at the end of the conversation, all about Jesus. And when she recruited, the thing about Sister Bessie, when she recruited you, you never felt like she was recruiting you. All you felt like is that she loved you. Sister Bessie has a big heart, and she has enough room for everybody. And she used to just welcome you in, welcome you in. I never once heard her say anything about, who's that? No, I'm not here. You know, you on the phone, no, I'm not here. Or who's at the door? Look out the window. I just heard her say, open the door, somebody's knocking. Who did I hear out there talking? She always made you feel welcome, and she always welcomed you home. And this is something, I'm going to sit down. If this is something to remember. This is Sister Bessie's home going. This ain't going home. When you go home, you'll come back. But her home going, she's going home, and she's not coming back because she's done what she said she was going to do. She made it all the way to the kingdom. So they'll welcome her home and say, well done. Sister Bessie, you've been faithful for a few things. Come on up, and I'll make you a ruler of men. Amen. May God, who sees you greet your grieving heart and hear each tender prayer be ever near to give you peace and keep you in his care. We, the members of the St. Stephen's Baptist Church, send our heartfelt condolences, condolences as you remember and celebrate the life of Miss Bessie McGee. To Sister Latoya Watson, may you find strength in knowing that your St. Stephen Baptist Church family is here for you and you are in our thoughts and our prayers. Be encouraged through the word of God as it is written in 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. I find I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but to all who have loved his appearance. Respectfully submitted by St. Stephen Baptist Church, Reverend Kevin. W. Crosby, Senior Pastor, Yvonne Roberts, Church Clerk. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now let us take a moment to uh, read the obituary to ourselves.
my remarks first. My uh, meeting of Miss Bessie uh, for the first time is uh, very similar to what Reverend Jim uh, shared uh, with uh, Miss Bessie. I would always uh, shake her hand before service. And it was one particular Sunday where we uh, touched hands and, and we gave the Lord praise and thanks. And this, it went on for probably about three to five minutes. And we just had uh, praise and worship right there in that moment. And this is uh, what I would remember about Miss Bessie uh, for the rest of my time is that no matter what, she always brought the Holy Spirit with her wherever she went. Mm -hmm. so all you simply have to do, had to do, is just touch her hand and you can feel the presence of the Lord in the midst of that agreement. So we'll leave it to the other reverends to share their remarks. Um, I'm going to be short. Um, I basically see it in reflections, but I love uh, Sister Bessie. Just like my own mother. She was so kind and some a little secret y'all might not know about me when I got called into the ministry, although my wife and them believed me maybe, but Sister Bessie was the first one to shake my hand and to tell me she already knew that I was coming, and it makes a big difference when you hear something like that. But Sister Bessie had a way of soothing your heart, and another thing you don't know about me and Sister Bessie is that she helped me write my first sermon. I had everything all <laughs> I had everything all scrambled up, and I was telling her about it. And she was like, "No, no, no! It goes like this, not that. It goes like that, not this." Right there, I knew she was a Bible scholar, but I didn't know how much so. So, I just tell the family, "I know your heart is hurting, and I know you'd wish her back here, but don't wish her back here. This is a terrible place that we live in. She's gone to the kingdom. She's done what she said she was going to do." And I just want to say I love y'all. And if you need me, call me. Are there any other ministers or reverends that would like to give some remarks? So we'll have a selection uh, by uh, Ms. Latoya Watson, and then after that, we'll have our message of comfort from Reverend Allen Goodman. Amen.
thank you, Sister Latoya Watson, for sharing. When you hear my home going, don't you worry about me. That song been on my heart too for a long time. Praise God. Glad you could do it. I don't have that song yet in my heart. That's a good one there. I know your grandmother would be proud of that song. We are here in celebration of the life of Sister Betsy Valentine Mickey. I always want to know where that beast stood for. <laughs> for those of you who are relatives and friends and those who might be watching uh, the online service, I'm Pastor Alvin Goodwin, former pastor of Sycamore, and have served twice the congregation. And each time, Sister Bell Betsy was very, very, very much active and a part of that church. But before I get into our time together, Father, uh, our message, I want to share with you a portion of a scripture text that was also one of her favorite texts. I'm sure she had many, but this one in particular was shared with me, and I like to share a portion of that text too, coming from John chapter 14. Read just a few verses of that text. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many a mansion. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you will know. Verses 1 through 4 of the book of John, chapter 14. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious and heavenly Father, we're thankful, first of all, for this wonderful life that we come to celebrate. Mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, sister, friend. Lord, we thank you for our life and for the opportunity of sharing that life down through these years. But not only that, but let our memories of her continue to live on in our hearts. Lord, and let the words of wisdom continue to ring in our ears. And let those moments that might be quiet that we hear still her voice speaking to our hearts. Oh Lord, now we know that She's in your eternal kingdom, but we know that you said that you always be with us. Now we pray that your spirit, comforting spirit, will be with this family and friends during this time. Gracious Lord, hear our prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I feel it an honor and a privilege to come and share before you, the family, during this time. And I know there's so much family really could have filled up this place and some more. Mm -hmm. Between the, from the children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren and cousins and nieces and nephews and others. There's a lot out here that love Sister Betsy. Mm -hmm. This day, I just want to let you know that there is no more troubled hearts. Jesus has an intimate conversation with his disciples to comfort them. 
But those words were not just meant for the disciples, but were meant for all of us who are believers in Jesus Christ. Let not your heart be troubled. That's a powerful opening statement right there. Because they were concerned as Jesus was expressing that his end would be coming soon. But not only that, it also encompassed everybody uh -huh. that one day we will be not here yes. in the earthly kingdom. Uh -huh. But Jesus expressly talks about a heavenly uh -huh. kingdom yeah. <coughs> that all of us who are believers shall partake in. You know, there are some people who always question, well, what happens after death? What, where do we go? And, and all kinds of people who do a lot of kind of uh, philosophizing <laughs> ideas about death. But I want to let you know, Jesus says, I go and prepare a place for you yeah, yeah. in my Father's house. Yes, yeah, sir. Amen. There's a many a match. Uh huh. On translation, I say many rooms. Either way, there's plenty of places for me to be there. Yeah. And he's going to prepare a place for you. And I know Sister Betsy know that and had that comfort in her heart. She knew that there's a place that we could talk about, we could sing about. My spiritual writers used to say, plenty good room. Yes, plenty good room. Mm -hmm. Plenty good room in my father's kingdom. Yes, sir. That's where that text was lived out uh -huh. in people's hearts. They knew that there was something better than this world down here. Mm -hmm. Jesus was about giving us a preparation. Pre preparing his disciples, preparing all of us that we might believe and receive what Christ has in store for us. Everything that you do down here is in preparation for the next kingdom. Mm -hmm. So, if Sister Betsy was faithful not only to the church, but to her family, for those who enjoyed those wonderful warm meals and mm -hmm. things that we all would enjoy around the lawn and outdoors and indoors and everywhere else, for mm -hmm. could fit. <laughs> yeah. We knew that all of that is a part of getting ready for God's kingdom. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. In Jesus' intimate conversation, he comforted his disciples and he comforts us today. Uh -huh. Even then, just like now, the disciples ask a whole lot of questions. That whole uh, text of John 14, you will find the voices of the disciples asking all kinds of questions of Jesus about the Father and, and the Son and all that. He says, well, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Mm -hmm. If you love me, then you love the Father. Mm -hmm. But not only that, but he says that I am the way, yeah. the yeah. truth, yeah. and the life. And he, no man can come unto the Father but by me. Yes, sir. Amen. That's the steps. That's the process. That's what the words of comforting that Jesus is sharing with his disciples. If you're with me and I am with you, you abiding with me. Mm -hmm. We all wrapped up, tangled up in God's love. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Out of the many texts in the Bible, John is one of my favorite writers because somehow the book of John gives a summation to me of the Gospels. He summarizes it from the beginning to the end and he always, the, the big word that keeps popping up all through John's text is the word love. John hammers in 
the part that Jesus expresses. Love is the key. I love you, my disciples, and if you love me, then you are abiding. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and if you keep my commandments, then, then, then I am with you. With you, yes, sir. But he says this as well. He doesn't leave you alone. He doesn't leave us alone when we lose somebody. He says, I sin. My comforter. The comforter should come. Yes. Now, if somebody won't know what, what in the world is a comforter? The comforter is the spirit. Spirit of God shall dwell with you. It says how and how long it should dwell with you forever. The comforter should come and should dwell with you forever so you are never ever alone even though we may physically feel like we're alone, but the Lord says you're never ever alone. No. Never alone. He promised to keep us. Oh, never. Never alone. I know losing somebody and your loved one and Sister Betsy and everybody else you could probably call the role of those that you've lost down through the years. But I want to let you know, don't let your heart be troubled. Jesus. The Lord's got this. Sometimes you might think, have I done or could I have done anything else or anything better or anything toward mother or grandmother? <coughs> Well, I still want to let you know, don't let your hearts be troubled. You've done the best you could. You have honored your mother. It's like the text says, honor your mother and your father and your day shall be long. You've honored her. You took care of her from the good days down to the days that wasn't so good. You took care of her. You did what you could do. And that is honoring your parents your loved one. So this, your hearts no longer have to be troubled about the declining years. And her heart doesn't have to be troubled about the living. Because what holds you together is still the love of God. I asked Sister Betsy, but that's what you have me to say. Mm -hmm. And the resounding words just kept coming back. Tell them to love one another. <laughs> love one another unconditionally. Whether you may not like everything that goes on, but still love them anyway. Amen. Amen. Love them like Jesus loved us so much. So love them anyway. All the way to the cross of Calvary, he loved us. Love us even beyond the grave. Love them anyhow. That way you know your heart shall not be troubled. Amen. Because you are love. And you're going to share that expressive love of Jesus Christ to not only family, but everybody you meet. And then they will feel that love that Brother Jim talked about. That's what you felt. Yes, sir. You felt the love of God uh -huh. yes, sir. and Sister Betsy. Yes, and that love just exudes all through yes, sir. one another. Mm -hmm. So if you had a Holy Ghost moment, Brother Pastor Steve, I'll tell you, that's all right. Because you can rejoice. Jesus also unfolds this text when he talks to them about, about what else, else is in store for those who love him. We may want to weep, I know. And that's perfectly normal. All of that is, 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 is normal. I like 
what Thessalonians says about uh, weeping, that we should not <coughs> weep as if we have no hope. Because those who are in Christ Jesus, you have hope. Amen. Hope in what? Hope in the resurrected Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who had already come and paid the price for us. And in this, Jesus then comes back and says this to us as well. When they may still be concerned, meaning the disciples, of what was going to happen, and he says this about what else I'm leaving you. Peace. I leave you. I like that. Peace I leave you. Not like the world leaves you. The world don't give you no true peace. You know that. We, we see what's going on in our world today. And on these very unusual times that we're having right now. I tell you, this world doesn't offer you peace, but Jesus says, peace I leave you. Peace I give you. Not like the world would give you. different kind of peace. Peace in your heart. Sometimes we have unsettling moments and sometimes our minds get all rattled and confused with stuff that's going on in our world, stuff that may be going on in our personal lives and everything. But I want to say today, if you seek God's peace, pray for peace. My heart Spirit, that you might be settled in your life and that your life will have more abundance should be in your life when you seek God's peace by yourself. Jesus opens up with the statement, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. And then towards the almost towards the end of that same text, he reiterates the same statement. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Because he wants to remind us to rejoice that he's going to his father and his father is bigger than you and I. Mm -hmm. Rejoice because I'm going to my eternal father. No more troubled hearts. Everything will be all right because of that. No more crying there. No more weeping. No more death. Only joy. Those will see it. All of those who have gone on before us. Face to face. So. No more troubled hearts. There's nothing else that you can do on this side. She's now on the other side. <coughs> the side that she lived for, the side that was promised by Jesus, the side that our ancestors and those gone on before us have believed and received with whole hearts knowing that this is not the end. <laughs> no. Amen. The, 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 this is not the end. This is this is just this is just being transported to the other dimension that we call heaven. This is not the end. We can rejoice. She truly rests from her labor. And her works will follow her. She will rest from that. No more struggling. No more body aches. No more pain and suffering. No more doctors. No more hospitals. None of that anymore. Here we can rest. And be entered in on the other side. By our welcoming Savior. That can say, come on up a little higher. I'll make you ruler over me. Because why? You've been faithful. 
over a few things. I want to just tell us, just, just be faithful over a few things. All right. <laughs> and I'll raise you on up and rule up over a minute. Oh, yeah. Just be faithful. Yes, sir. Over a few things. That's all we can do, Pastor, be faithful. Oh, yeah. Over a few things. Family, be faithful. <laughs> Over a few things. All right. All right. And your reward is waiting for you. Thank you, God. But to be faithful, you got to remember it's all about this love. The love of Jesus Christ. And that love that hangs in it through this dear lady, your mother. Grandmother, great grandmother, sister, she believed and kept the faith that her reward was waiting for her. Waiting for her. Just waiting for all of us. Yes, thank you, Dave. So, can't you just hear? This peace that I have, well, they can give it to me. Well, can't take it from me. This love I got, the world, they can give it to me. The world can't take it away. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The shoulder can't take it away. All of this was because she was faithful until the end. We invite those to remember her in that way. And when there is a time to make your commitment or recommitment to Christ, you have that opportunity because truly it's got something in store for you. Be faithful.
service at the cemetery. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ continue to be with you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Would the pallbearers come forward?